Good evening and here is the news. A few weeks ago we reported that the Israelites had seen God's power as he led them through the Red Sea. But now, just days later, it is a completely different story. A story of moaning and whinging Israelites. We sent our reporter, Benjamin Brown, to investigate. Benjamin, what can you tell us? Thank you, Peter. Yes, the moaning began just three days after the Israelites had crossed through the Red Sea. They'd seen God's power in action, but three days later they were very, very thirsty. Until they arrived at this place, Mara, and they thought, great water to drink. But it was not a case of water to drink, because the water was totally dirty and undrinkable. They could not drink that water, Peter. I spoke earlier to a man called Samuel, and he described what happened then. Yeah, I mean, it was dreadful, really dreadful. I mean, we, we, we said to Moses, we should have stayed where we were in Egypt. At least in Egypt, we had plenty to drink. But now we were really worried about where the next drink was coming from. We were really thirsty and we were just really thirsty. And then, then we came to this place, Mara, and we thought, brilliant, loads of water here, lots to drink. But it was, it was all yucky water. We couldn't drink it, it was disgusting. It made us all ill. So we had another moan at Moses. We told him, you know, we were really worried about the water. And he did what he always does. He went and talked to Father God about it. Well, anyway, Father God told him to get a branch and to throw the branch in the water and then the water would be all right again. So he, he got his branch, he threw it in the water and then the water turned all pure. It's lovely. Cheers. So, all was fine. The Israelites had water, surely the end of their worries. And so it was for a week or two. But then, once again, the Israelites were back to their worrying, moaning ways. But this time, it wasn't about water, it was about food. We sent our on-respot reporter, Simon Green, to investigate. Simon, what can you tell us? Well, Peter, yes, it was a serious case of rumbling tummies. It seems that just one month after leaving Egypt, where the Israelites had plenty to eat, now Moses had brought them into this desert place where they had quite literally nothing to eat. Their tummies were rumbling. And when I say they had nothing to eat, I mean they had no chocolate fingers. They had no pizzas. They had no burgers. They had no hot dogs. They had no chocolate chip cakes. They had no bananas. They had no jam tarts. They had no baked beans. They had... Okay, Simon, we get the picture. They had nothing to eat. So what happened? Okay, Peter, I, I, I've got here a Miss Rebecca Goldberg, one of the starving, hungry Israelites. Miss Goldberg, you were one of the starving, hungry Israelites. Can you tell us how you were feeling? Starving, hungry. We were so worried. I was so worried that I was going to starve. We hadn't eaten for days. So what, what's happened? Well, we moaned to Moses and he went to God. He went to God and what, what happened then? Um, God sorted it out. How can you describe to us how just how God has sorted it out? Well, uh, each morning we get this lovely stuff called manna. Mm. Manna, okay, yeah. looks very tasty. And, and then each day we get uh, evening we get these birdies called quails. They're called quail. Yeah. I see. Okay, and, and their finger looking good. Their finger looking good. So it looks like God has sorted it out again, Peter. Um, back to you in the studio. So worries about yucky water worries about no food. Surely our story should have ended there. But no, our story does not end there. The Israelites had moved on to a place called Rephidim, and it is from Rephidim that our reporter, Jacob Green, is sending us this report. Jacob, what can you tell us? Yes, Peter. Once again, the Israelites found themselves without any water not a drop to drink and once again it was Moses who found himself at the sharp end of all those moans and all those worries. I spoke earlier to a Mr Michael Epstein who was there at the time. He describes what happened. Well it was incredible. I mean if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes I'd have never believed it. I mean we were really thirsty. There was no water, not a, not a drop to drink and there were babies crying and children were, 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 were crying and, and the grown-ups were moaning like they did and everyone was getting really worried that we wouldn't have anything to drink and but we got a good old moan to old Moses and 
Well, he did what he always did. He, he had a chat with Father God and, well, God told him to take his stick and to hit the rock with it. So that's what Moses did. He, he got his stick and he, he, he hits the rock with it and water started gushing out of the rock. Look at it. And it's been pouring out and gushing out ever since. Like I say, I would never have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. So Peter, as you can hear, some quite remarkable happenings earlier in the day. Now it's back to you in the studio, Peter. Thank you, Jacob. So it looks this evening as though our message very distinctly is, don't worry about anything, just pray. It does seem to work. Now I'm going to hand over to Lynn over there in Sutton. Lynn, can you just summarise this evening for